Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and this is our tutorial series where we cover fire. Now we've got different sizes and styles ready, and each of these will be in their own video, just so you don't have to hunt around or, or wait a, through a very long video. You can just pick the video in the series that you're looking for, or you can watch them all for a slightly more comprehensive view and understanding of, of fire. Now we've got small and medium, and large. Uh, each of them have a realistic and stylized version to them, as you could probably see here down below. Now they've all been made, but if you don't see the links in the description down below, that means they haven't been published yet. Make sure to subscribe with the notifications on if you'd like to catch those. But for now, let's get started. Okay, so this part is going to be a realistic, medium-sized flame. Uh, this is our third video in this series. Uh, first we did the realistic small flame, then a stylized small flame, and now we're in the realistic medium-sized fl flame, like a torch. Uh, and the next one is going to be a stylized medium-sized flame. Uh, but I brought this, this, uh, this was our, 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 our little little candle flame I, we made earlier. I brought this for scale, because this is a little guy, for, for like a little candle or a lighter. Now this next one we're doing right now is going to be, say for example, a torch, which will, like here's the torch, right? And then the stick's gonna be coming down and we're gonna have the fire going up like that. Okay, so I just have this little thing here for scale. We don't even need it out here. But the colors we're gonna be using is mostly just the white, the yellow, our orange, and a little, just a little bit of red. We're not gonna be using much of that. And we're not really gonna be touching the blue because in most cases, like torches, you don't really see that much blue. Uh, just because of how the fire is burning, the material they're burning, and the temperature, and the wind, and all that stuff. Now the brush we're going to be using is the same one we've been using. It's the hard round pressure opacity. Make sure that the size of the pin pressure isn't something we have to worry about. So we're going to turn that off, so where it's more like an opacity situation. If this is your first video here, you do that by making sure transfer is checked in your brush settings. We're going to be doing this, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the shape of our torch. A standard torch, right, and the stick's coming out like that. Okay, so now a medium-sized flame. If it's if something's on fire, like a hand, hopefully not, but maybe your wizard or something. I don't know why you're drawing medium-sized flames. It's all up to you. But it will wrap around uh, whatever it's on fire, right? So, if, for example, the torch will be on fire. So the flame is going to wrap around and sort of mesh along the, the size and the shape of that torch. So we're just going to get the shape in real quick. We're not really worried too much about have, how clean it is yet. Let's move this down a bit, give ourselves a little more room for that flame to go a little higher. Get our brush a little bit bigger. And so, after the fire wraps around it, it kind of comes up like this. Okay? So it's not gonna go straight up. It tends to go, like uh, the middle of the object that's on fire, whatever the middle is, that's the center of your flame. So if the center of the flame is right there, then that's, you know, this edge isn't going to go straight up. It's, it's going to gravitate towards the center. Same with over here. It's going to gravitate more towards the center. It's not going to go straight up, which is kind of important. <laughs> okay, so we get our brush nice and big. And we're just going to put in a little bit of these shapes here. Now the flame of a medium-sized flame is pretty solid in the middle. Right, and and, and medium-sized flames from like torches typically kind of look, kind of like columns, but a little wavy. Uh, but then you know it kind of dies out and burns out or whatever it's going, and uh, gets a little crazy near the top. So let's just have a little bit of this. We're gonna erase a little bit of it just just to add a little extra crazy. Right, so we're gonna solid kind of column here, and we can have a little bit of variation, like little little branches kind of coming out. And I mentioned in the previous uh, stylized small flame that people tend to draw flames like liquid. And there's a reason for that. And that's because uh, heat travels in waves. And let's actually demonstrate that right here. In the, in the bottom area, say, if you got a torch, just erase a bit here because you want there to look like there's waves wrapping around the torch because there are science. <laughs> you want a good orange outline around the outside of the torch, including up here where the torch, where the, where the fire is. And we can actually show that outline by erasing just a little bit from just above where the outline is. And if you erase too much, just draw in a little bit more of that outline. Remember, here's our outline. <laughs> it's a terrible outline. Here's our outline, there we go. And 
And this is just the orange, right? These are, these are always pretty quick. We don't want to look too much like a tree, but you know, sometimes it is what it is. It's really nothing crazy. And we don't have to worry about what cutting in really sharp shapes right now because this is a, a more realistic flame and those are typically more more blurry, a little softer. They don't usually get to, uh, you don't have to worry too much about them looking sharp and, and like cutting in really tight, sharp shapes and round and, and corners and spikes and stuff. Typically, like honestly, you could really do realistic fire pretty good with a really soft brush if you want to. So let's move on from the orange real quick. We'll come back to it probably. And go to our yellow. Now, just like how our little flame worked, we started with orange and then we did yellow around the, uh, the middle and up a bit. We're gonna do the exact same thing with this guy, but we're gonna bring it down a bit. The brightest part of a torch isn't the actual torch itself, it's the column of flame. Now that sounds like <laughs> it's common sense, uh, but most people don't really think about that when they're drawing. Uh, fire, or when they even just think about fire. Most people don't think about fire that often unless it's their job. <laughs> I've noticed. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to worry about where the outline of the torch is. We're just going to make sure that the torch stays outlined. We're not going to have too much going down into the torch. The yellow doesn't have to go... We can, we can decrease the size of the brush too, by the way, to make threads, which I'll get into in a second. But there's not much yellow going down into the waves of the torch itself. Just a little bit. Just a tiny touch. Just on the thicker parts of these waves. Keep our brush nice and big. The yellow part goes all the way up to here. And it gets less yellow and more red the higher up the, the flame gets. When the flame gets more chaotic, a little colder, it tends to emit a little less light. I think it tends to be more heat at that point. Uh, but we don't need to worry too much about yellow and white getting up to here. This up, up in this zone right here is going to be mostly just orange and red. But we have a little bit of yellow there. Okay, so talking about those threads earlier. Grab that orange color or that orange color. And we're just going to drop our brush down a little bit. Not like a hair, but small, you know, like, uh, like that or so. And one of the reasons I like using these hard brushes is because you can cut lines pretty good. And with fire, because fire travels in waves, just like how it's doing right here, right? Sometimes there's very small waves. So if you decrease the size of your brush sometimes and keep it moving, keep it looking like it's going like this, right? You can add small little what I like to call threads, because they look like tiny little little strings. It's not too bad. Cut a bit more there. We can keep the sides and top looking kind of fuzzy, but we don't have to worry too much about it. Grab that orange again. And we're going to keep putting a little extra orange on the top. We're going to add a little bit of orange over this yellow. The bigger the flames, typically the more complicated they get. I'm going to try and make sure that it stays as, as easy to understand as possible. I'm trying, okay? And that's, it's, it's not too complicated, but it is a little, it's, uh, you know, the more variations you got to worry about, the more you got to think about. Okay, let's add the white. Now again, just like our little candle, the white only stays inside the yellow. It doesn't really ever leave the yellow. Keep your brush nice and big. And right in the middle of all the yellow, wherever you put some yellow, not every little bit of yellow, but wherever there's a lot of yellow, add some white. And if there's too much white, you can go back and add some more yellow to sort of diffuse the white. And then orange, can't really have too much orange, in my personal opinion. Now, just like how the small flame worked, there was an orange outline around the entire thing. We're going to make sure we do that too. Okay? Fire is still fire. And we don't have to worry about it being like a really sharp cut like we did in the stylized one. So you can keep your brush kind of soft.
you know, race a little bit here, trying to make sure a little extra chaos gets involved because chaos, I mean, fire is essentially all nothing but just crazy chaos, right? You really can't control it. So to paint it, it's pretty easy as long as you just kind of let your brush do its thing. Not worrying too much about all that. We're just trying to make sure there's enough orange and yellow between the white and the, uh, the orange. Yeah, like that, okay. So moving on, we're gonna grab a little bit of the red, and we're not gonna use a lot of red here. Okay, like I said, the red area is pretty much the top, and just a little bit of the sides, and just a little bit down here too. Okay, now we're gonna be very gentle with this red. We don't need that much. We're not gonna go all, you know, that's, that's too much red, okay? We're just adding a red tint. Because torches, the bigger the fire, the brighter they get, right? The red flame, I think, is technically like the coldest kind of flame, if I remember correctly. My science class. We're going to put any red anywhere, make sure it's just a little bit on the edges. And now we're going to add a little bit of red down here. Because the heat rises, so the higher up you get on the torch, the, the hotter it gets. So it's not uncommon for some red to be down in the torch. We don't want too much, so grab a little bit of the color that you already put there, some of the yellow, not any of the white, a lot of the orange. Make sure there's a nice wave going on in this torch. All right, we want this torch to have waves. Sort of like it's wrapping around the torch. Or the hand or whatever you're drawing that's on fire. <laughs> nice medium-sized flame, right? Let's add some threads. Just down here a bit. You add some threads up here. On the side, just add a little chaos. I feel like the Joker. And we're gonna grab some of that red. Gently fluff around the top area. When you have a nice uh, big torch or a big flame, it's big enough to where you can sort of see the smoke around it because the light is bouncing off, uh, the light from the torch is bouncing off the smoke that the torch is making, depending on wherever the torch is burning. So for torches, for example, the torches, the fire of the torch is burning the material on the torch, which could be alcohol and cloth or wood or whatever it is. So having a little extra fuzzy orange and red on the outside of this torch, perfectly acceptable. Let's lighten it up a bit more. Okay, now, I'm just gonna add a little extra orange over here, just because I like this to be, I'll brighten up the sides a bit. Grab a, a little bit of yellow, just a tiny little bit, because it's still a torch. I want it to be a little bright, All right? There we go, okay. And now, I was talking about something, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> okay, now, let's get our soft brush. And we don't have to worry about making another layer for this. We can just grab the yellow. And we're gonna gently add a little bit of light right around the white part. The white part, like I said, is the brightest part. And the brightest part is usually in the middle of the column. Don't go too crazy, because otherwise it takes away from, like, you know, <laughs> the white. And if you need, you can always go back and add a little bit. Select the white and just bump up the little, with your soft brush, right? Just bump up the white area just a little bit. Don't go too crazy. Again, it's easy to go crazy. Try not to, okay? All right, now I'm going to move the canvas to the side because it's easier for me to draw like this, and we're just gonna add a little bit of lighting. And this is more realistic, so we're just gonna keep it looking realistic. So the brighter part, like the yellow, is in the middle. It goes out to the orange, just like how it is on the torch itself. It's more orange. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now remember, this is to scale, okay? So here's our little candle flame, 
right here. And this is our torch. So this has been the realistic medium-sized flame. This is the third in a line of fire tutorials, which are stylized and realistic. There's the realistic small flame, the stylized small flame, the realistic medium flame right here. The next video is going to be a stylized medium flame, like a torch or a, or a fire spell or something like that. And then we're gonna get into the big ones. Okay, realistic big flames, like gargantuan flames, and then stylized huge flames. So this is gonna be a playlist down in the description below, you should find links to each of these videos that you can go to and check if you need to. I, I separated them to make sure that there's no extra bloat and you can just pick the one you want or the one you need. In the description down below, if you do not see the links to the videos, that means they haven't been published yet. I'm recording these all in the same time and I'm editing them in, in, in different intervals because it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of tutorials, so I'm, I'm trying to get them all done at a reasonable time. And I want to make sure that they're not space too far apart either so it's not gonna be much longer hopefully feel free to subscribe and turn the notification bell on uh, if you'd like to catch and be notified when the next tutorial drops not only am i doing flame tutorials but i'm also gonna be doing ice and wood and all kinds of stuff on the screen right now uh should be some more tutorials for you to check out uh possibly the same ones in this series i don't really know when you're watching this video it could be years down the line so if that's the case then this probably is the you know the rest of the fire tutorials but if not if not then there's probably some other cool tutorials that I've made. Feel free to like the video if you liked it or found it interesting or useful. Uh, subscribe to see more tutorials, tips and tricks and time lapses. Thank you to my amazing patrons who I appreciate the ever loving out of because they support the ever loving out of me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.